deep drag queen voice I was talking too much last night so um, there's a little bit of that um, so this is kind of actually a recap of the demo I did on in my workshop on Wednesday and I wanted to uh, expand a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes here because um, I did have to kind of cobble this together to make it work um, so a couple of things that are going on behind the scenes we've got uh, SOCAT which is actually um, sending the data streams in and out of the container uh, and we've got XQuartz because we need to be able to have an X11 window manager to uh, bind to. Uh, so I'll pull this up and uh, first of all, um, and, it, and uh, another situation where, you know, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, I'm just going to run my little alias here, which all that does is it runs this uh, SOCAT command right at the top. Uh, and then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. All right. So now we've got some googly eyes rolling around the screen on a Mac. Um, pretty useful, like amazing enterprise feature there. Um, <laughs> So let's maybe do something a little bit more interesting. <laughs> uh, and let's run up this. This isn't going to work because I've still got that open. So let's run up Slack. Now this is the Linux version of Slack running in a Docker container and the, uh, the screen output forwarded to our Mac machine. Which is kind of cool, but Let's do something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to grab this. Now, uh, this command's a lot bigger because we're running up Chrome, and we all know that as soon as you open more than one tab, Chrome likes to eat RAM. So I've got this little extra snippet here to kind of limit that a little bit so that Chrome doesn't eat all of my RAM. Uh, we take a little bit of a look further along in the command. Um, I've also got an environment variable uh, defined so that we can uh, just get the Wi-Fi IP without having to um, fart around with if config to grab that. Um, we've got bind mounts so that we can have our downloads folder mounted. Uh, and another bind mount so that we've got our Google Chrome data, so we've actually got persistent state across uh, different launches of this. Um, and the Docker container actually removes itself uh, when it shuts down. Um, and, you know, just because YOLO, uh, we're running a host-style network there. Now, the caveat with this, of course, is um, it's not going to win any awards for performance. Yeah. Um, but what we've found, so uh, we use something very, very analogous to this in production at work um, for the simple fact that we have, as a film studio, uh, we have certain security requirements imposed on us, um, not only by our clients, but also by uh, you know, the you know, film associations, etc. And so we have this wonderful air-gapped internet. Not one person in the organization has a direct connection to the internet. And so to get around that so that people can still access it on their own machine, we're spinning up Docker containers on our server, redirecting that visual output across the network to their local machine. Uh, and so then they can get their internet access. Um, we've also got a couple of other things in, in place there. Uh, where doing something slightly different using XPRA, which um, gives us a little bit better performance. Um, and it's probably not great that this is running on a seven-year-old MacBook Pro either. So, um, but yeah, that's, I've still got 40 seconds, uh, but that's, that's my story. Hope you like it.